All right, Cher Love T here, and I'm back with another DVD pickups video. Uh, this one, I've got a couple CDs and a couple tapes uh, the, from yesterday, actually. I picked up at the secondhand store. I figured while I'm at it, looking out for DVDs, I might as well look for CDs and other odds and ends while I'm at it. And I don't have very many cassette tapes, so I figured, hey, why not? They only had two of them there, and they happen both to be pretty good. And, um... We've got a lot of movies to go over here. Um, they're all from within the last maybe two months, I would say. I picked up over uh, from garage sales, from thrift shops, uh, pawn shops, secondhand stores. Um, most of them were very cheap. Um, two of them I actually bought at a store full price. Uh, I was a little excited to start collecting again and um, You'll see, there, there are two movies that you probably wouldn't find at a garage sale or a pawn shop. And, um, yeah, some of them are sealed. Uh, most of them are not. So we'll get to it. So starting off, we'll get these out of the way. I picked up these two tapes. We had Huey Lewis and the News Sports, which I think this is probably one of his better albums. Heart and Soul uh, is a really good song. Um, yeah. And the other one was a Paul McCartney album, which I don't actually recognize this album. I didn't recognize any of the songs on it, but it is Paul, Mac Paul McCartney from the Beatles. I mean, if you don't know, I don't know how you would not know. You'd have to live under a rock. Next, we have some CDs. So some weird Chinese albums, actually. This one happened to be sealed. It was 12 yen somebody paid for this. And it is... The 10 Greatest Chinese Classical Musics. I don't know if I'll, I'll open this one. I have two other Chinese albums here open, so I'll probably just check those two out. Uh, this one is the Chinese Ballad Tree Cantina. Uh, I really thought it has a nice slip cover. It's, two, it's a double album. Um, so I figured why not? I, I'm always interested to check out different kinds of music. And then this one I actually checked out on the way back from the store, and it was China People's Music. So class another classical China music, what you would expect pretty much out of uh, Chinese music. Then we have some regular, more regular-ish albums. We have Rod Stewart, Unplugged, so a live album. Um, this one has special guest Ronnie Wood on it. Uh, pretty fun. So Rod Stewart's a classical, raspy voice. I really uh, dig his style. Um, I do cover a couple of his songs, but I will tell you after singing a Rod Stewart song, your, your, your voice is pretty sore after that because you really have to push out that raspiness. All right, we got Brian Adams. Now, Brian Adams is one of those artists I would have never listened to when I was younger. It was too slow, too romantic or whatever. Um, but now, when being older, I can really appreciate um, could really appreciate it. To be fair, I always had the guilty pleasure of enjoying everything I do. I do it for you from Robin Hood. I always really liked that song, but I don't think I ever really realized that it was Brian Adams. Um, so yeah, pretty classic album. Uh, Closer, The Best of Sarah McLaughlin. I really like Sarah McLaughlin. Um, she has a couple songs that, you know, I think most people know. I, I Will Remember You, uh, Adia, Sweet Surrender, Building a Mystery. Building a Mystery is one of my particular uh, favorite songs uh really deep uh meaning to it and uh very heavy very heavy if you understand what what those lyrics are about and uh yeah that's a good album to pick up christmas with glenn campbell glenn campbell is a, a classic country singer he has a lot of great songs and he's done a lot of um collaborations with other artists like willie nelson and stuff like that um great great artist and uh why not it's one of my girlfriend's mom's favorite singers 
So I figured that would be a fun one to listen to around Christmas. And last up, we got Jack Johnson and Friends from the Curious George um, soundtrack, I guess. Sing-alongs and lullabies for the film. Uh, I just thought the case was really nice. And uh, I like Jack Johnson. He's a uh, very chill. Um, I don't know what you would consider his music. Like folk, I guess. Uh, a little bit of reggae in there. Uh, acoustic style. Very good. So that's what I got for music. The tapes I'll probably never listen to. That's just, just to own some tapes because I don't really have any. All right, then we got some DVDs there. To be honest, I had already been to the store a couple weeks ago. And uh, so anything that was there I, I wanted, I probably would have grabbed already. Um, so I was really digging, really digging at this point. We have It Runs in the Family with Michael Douglas and Kirk Douglas. Uh, two really good actors. Uh, my girlfriend s says this is a really good movie. Uh, I'm not sure if I've seen it or not. I, it's a good chance that I've seen it before, but it's been a long time. Far From Heaven. I have no idea about this movie. Um, I know Dennis Quaid's a pretty good actor. I enjoy. And uh, it looks like an interesting romance movie. Kind of a slower one, probably, I would imagine. Something I'll enjoy with my girlfriend. And Getting Hot and Steamy with Richard Gere and Kim Basinger with Final Analysis. This is another, like, put on with my girlfriend. I, I you know, I probably wouldn't go out to grab a movie like this if I was single. I'd be feel pretty lonely watching this. But with your girlfriend or whatever, or your, your romantic partner, that's probably a good one. The Never Ending Story 2. Now, the first one is... An amazing movie, the first never ending story. Uh, unfortunately, from what I remember, it goes pretty much downhill after that. You still have the dog, you still have the rock guy. Uh, Trey was a different actor, the main actor is a different kid. Uh, it gets more cheesy as the series goes on, but it's still a classic series, so I figured why not own the second one. I'm pretty sure I do have the first one somewhere around. Next, we have Extras. I've heard a lot of good stuff about this show. I have no idea about it, but this is the first, the complete first season of Extras. And then last up, we have got Simple Plan. So any music DVD, uh, I think for cheap's so probably a good deal. Uh, it'll be collectible in the long run. Simple Plan, I... Uh, I do know a couple of their songs. I did enjoy a couple of their songs. Um, but it's not really like a go-to band for me or anything. Um, so I might put this on that for fun at some point. But it was more just to, to have a music DVD. Next up is two DVDs that I actually bought pretty much full price. For in 2023, believe it or not. So Jurassic World, the ultimate collection... Um, I'm a huge Jurassic Park fan, so um, the third one hasn't come out on the streaming services yet. And the rest of the series seems to jump from streaming service to streaming service. The license comes, it goes. And uh, Jurassic Park's one of those movies, if I'm in the mood for it, I just want to be able to put it on. So I have the complete six movie collection here all three jurassic parks all three jurassic worlds so i thought that one was a good one to have i didn't really mind paying a little bit more for it and uh you know considering i just started back collecting dvds you know support the industry a little bit why not and spirited away um classic anime uh this is a movie i probably won't find secondhand uh, at a, you know, at a pawn shop or at, or a secondhand store because you know anime tends to get sniped pretty quick. Might come across it luckily at a garage sale or something like that. You never know. But on the most part, chances are I would have just had to suck it up and buy it. Um, so, but this is a classic, classic anime, and I think this is a good entry point for anybody that's either 
undecided about anime or not really into anime because I think this is more of a um, um, good storytelling and good writing and um, I think people that aren't really into anime I think Studio Ghibli especially is a, a good entry point for them all right, so now this is, the rest of this pile, this is all from garage sales, from thrift shops, second-hand stores, pretty much all over the place. First up, we have got a collection of four National Lampoon's Vacation movies. So we have Vacation, Vegas Vacation, European Vacation, Christmas Vacation. I have to be in the right kind of mood for these kind of spoof movies that don't really have like a, a solid story that I'm gonna get taken away into because um, I'm the type of person, if I'm sitting around too much, I start feeling like I'm wasting my time and not being productive. So I put on a spoof movie, I really feel like I'm not being productive, you know what I mean? So I have to be in the right mood where I could just relax and not worry about that type of thing to watch this type of movie. But nevertheless, I think any, um, any D little DVD collections, two pack, four packs, if the movies are decent, they're good to have. Next up is Robin Hood. This was in my first pickup video. I actually had a special edition that I found of it. So I will probably at some point sell this one or get rid of it, trade it off. I don't know what. Um, but this is a great, great, great movie. I love this movie. Uh, great soundtrack. Uh, just a really good medieval story and um i think unfortunately other robin hoods and uh spoof movies of robin hood came out around that time and you know kind of confused everybody but i think if you go back to this one this is definitely a good classic movie i would say alice in wonderland a classic disney movie and more of a psychedelic kind of movie if you like tripping out like you could almost be sober you could be sober and this would this would oh, oh boy saying tripping out and every my phone starts tripping out um you could be sober and still feel like you're probably on drugs watching this uh this is just a crazy 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 movie now this is Wow, this is a weird, weird movie. Um, it has a decent ending, so it's like, it's a bit long, feels a bit draggy, and it's very strange. I don't understand the world that it's set in. It's almost disorienting, it's so strange. Like, it's almost set in, like, a dream world or something. It doesn't feel like the real world or Earth. Um... Yeah, uh, my girlfriend didn't like it, but I thought it was a decent movie with some really crazy imagery, um, but very strange. You know, uh, that's probably not a movie I'll go back and watch too, too often. How do you know? Uh, you know, it's got an all-star cast of actors. I don't, I'm not sure I've watched this before, but it's more of like a romance comedy. I figured I'd pick this one up to watch with my girlfriend. Um, I like Jack Nicholson. And, uh, yeah. We'll see if that one's any good. Batman Begins. Probably one of the better uh, Batman movies. I think they've made enough Batman movies now at this point. You know, they just came out with one that was called The Batman like two years ago or something. It was like three hours long. Like, come on. It doesn't need to be that long. Um, but yeah. If you're going to watch, you know, there's a lot of good Batman movies. It's just a good character. And I think the um, the world that it's set in, that dark Manhattan um is a, a really cool um, world. So, um, I mean, that lends itself to good movie making. So maybe that's why they just keep making more and more Batman movies. But uh, yeah, at, at a certain point, probably enough's enough. 
Kurt Russell Escape from LA. I was actually just watching Escape from New York uh, last night. Uh, I have the last like half an hour to go back and watch. Uh, but I've watched them both before. If you've played the Metal Gear Solid games, uh, they definitely ripped that character off from this movie. Um, Solid Snake. I mean, he's got an eye patch. He looks exactly the same. Almost. It's like they literally... I don't know how they got away with stealing his likeness like that. And it's amazing back in the day compared to now. Actually, they used to do it even more now than they do now. But... You know, you look at a lot of those classic NES games like uh, Contra. Absolute classic game. And they, they clearly used Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone's likeness. Uh, you know, they they got away with some pretty shysty stuff back in the day. But Escape from L.A., it's a, another classic, like, uh, dystopian type movie, uh, action movie. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, Moana, Disney, classic Disney movie. I, I think one of the better new, new Disney movies. Uh, not, I wouldn't put it at the top of the list, but um, pretty decent music. Uh, You're welcome I, is one of my favorite tracks. Uh, probably one of my favorite Disney tracks. It's unbelievable. Uh, the Rock, he could sing, man. You wouldn't think, but wow. He kills it on that song. And uh, yeah, good movie. Stephen King. Um, so I've said it before, I'm not the biggest horror fan, but um, Stephen King movies tend to be good. Um, and not, it's more of like a psychological horror versus like a gore. I'm not into gore. I like, you know, I like psychological horror if I'm, if I'm going to watch that type of movie. And uh, Sleepwalkers, I might have seen before, but I don't, I'm not sure. And Pet Cemetery, another Stephen King uh, movie. Again, uh, if I've watched this, these both these Stephen King movies, it would have been years ago. Like there was a point when I in my when I was a teenager when I was into watching horror movies, and uh, nowadays, I tend to think of, you know, what if those horror movies were real life, and why. Who's making these fucking movies? And who, why are they thinking about this type of shit on the, on the average day? Like, why are you imagining different ways to murder people? Um, I get that there, it's exciting. You know, it has that draw, that shock value. And, but at the end of the day, I don't like the idea of it being real life. And, you know, I know it's fiction, but, you know, there's probably some of these people writing these stories that, one would do it in real life if they could and to me it's it's just a dirty kind of dark industry that you know once in a while I could get into and enjoy but um you know I like to live a more positive upbeat good life and murdering and all that sickness in our movies it's just you know sometimes not my thing it's all right. I don't yuck every, every, anybody else's yum. Another horror movie, Bram Stoker's Dracula. A uh, classic film, though. I mean, yeah. I haven't watched that one in a long time. I don't even know if I'll... It might be s too slow for me. We will see. Speaking of Batman, once again, happened to find this box set at a garage sale. And uh, I got it for a decent price. Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, and Batman and Robin. Uh, the first Batman is probably the best out of these. Uh, Batman Returns, uh, Tim Burton. Uh, like, the imagery and everything, it's so good. And I really enjoy Tim Burton. I really want to like this movie. But I find it to be so slow and boring that even the amazing imagery just can't keep it going for me. I just, 
I just find it boring. Uh, I can't say anything more than that. Batman Forever. It's been a long time since I watched this one. Uh, I believe this was with Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze, if I'm not mistaken. Um, crazy. Uh, they took it in a different direction fr from Batman Returns. Like, Batman Returns was very dark. This was a very colorful, over-the-top um, movie. Um, and then Batman and Robin. I don't remember too much about this one. Um... I, yeah, I don't think it was that great, but either way, it's a box set. It's Batman. Pretty cool. Uh, this one was in my last pickup video, too. I, so as I had mentioned, I, I have this twice, um, but I got it for cheap. And um, I mean, it is Superman. It's not the best. They haven't made better Superman movies, I don't think, since, but, uh, you know, for a long time, this, these were almost the only superhero movies to be had, so, um, there's definitely something to be said, at least for that. Night of the Living Dead, classic DVD, uh, or classic movie, rather, um, black and white, um, but I think the pacing, uh, just everything about it, it's just very campy, very, um, old school, but it set, set the stage for zombie movies to come. And, um, yeah, I think it, I think if you're into horror movies, this is one, uh, that you should definitely have on your list to watch if you haven't watched and I think it's actually pretty scary. Um, if you watch this movie when you're young, I think this could actually scare you quite a bit. Big Trouble in Little China. I love Kurt Russell. He's a great actor. And this is a hilarious um, movie. This is, yeah, it's hilarious. Um, a lot of action. And yeah. Very entertaining. Once Upon a Time in the West. Uh, Charles Bronson is pretty much the only name that I recognize out of there. But um, I think this was a later... A later um, oh, 1969. Okay, so this is an old old movie i actually don't know anything about this movie and i'm surprised because i know i've watched a lot of western movies uh, so i'll have to check this one out it's a special collector's edition big box i always always enjoy these big boxes the um forrest gump movie came in the special edition came in that same size box next we've got horror classics so this is more my style of horror, like the old, old, slow paced and, uh, no campy, not, not gory. Like there's, you know, very little gore in these old movies. Uh, so these ones have, what's his name again? Christopher Lee, Peter Cushion. So pretty much those are the two big names in horror back in the day. And there are three movies in all. Jack the Ripper, The Satanic Rites of Dracula, and Horror Express. I don't believe I've watched any of those. So I will check those out. But, you know, it's a three-pack. Seemed like a pretty good deal. Here's a classic movie. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Um, just a good slice-of-life comedy. Um... Yeah, enjoyable, enjoyable movie. It's not, you know, I think, I think that movie maybe gets more, um, more talk about it than it's really, I don't think it's as good as some people will say, but, um, it's a pretty good movie anyways. So this is, a, a six movie set that, 
is mostly probably not the greatest movies. We have six great movies. I just thought this was interesting. I've never seen any of um, box sets like this. Now, I, don't, I have no idea where this would have came from, but it actually does seem like it would have been licensed. And it pops out with these different... Like that. So we have Peter Pan, Thunderbirds, Two Brothers, The Little Rascals, Casper, The Cat and the Hat. All kind of middle of the pack movies i mean you know maybe a sunday afternoon with the with the, the kids or the grandkids or i don't know i just figure hey it's a six six pack it's the same price as any other dvd right so but you're getting six movies so that tends to sell me right there all right this is this is probably one of my favorite movies and uh Argu arguably the best movie to ever include pottery. I don't know, to be fair, any other um, movies that have done it. They referenced it in Community, which was really hilarious. I don't know if you guys have watched that show, but Ghost. I love this movie. I love, 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 love this movie. Such a heavy storyline. Great acting. Um, I... I I can't really say enough good about this movie. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg at her best. Uh, Patrick Swayze. Demi Moore. Uh, fantastic. If you guys have not watched that movie, check that movie out. I'm, I'm telling you. And it's one thing that shocks me. It's hard to find on the streaming services. I think... At one point, I might have had to rent it even. And then I think on Amazon Prime, one of the extra services have it. So you, you could uh, sign up for a free trial to be able to watch it. But this movie should not be so hard to watch. This is a classic movie. It's it's fantastic. Fantastic. Astro Boy greatest astral adventures um one of the earliest anime um this is this goes back so this particular one is 1983 but the character astro boy i believe go, goes a lot f further back than that and um you know arguably laid a lot of the groundwork for modern animes um so this is one to watch. I haven't, haven't yet to watch that particular movie, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, an American Tale, The Mystery of the Nine Monster. I have no idea about this one. Now, American Tale, I think, uh, Five Will Goes West, I believe that's the one that I watched as a kid that I really, really enjoyed. Uh, so another American Tale movie, it's probably budget. Uh, unfortunately... You know, um, Disney and a lot of these other companies that were making animation at the time uh, in the 90s came out with new movies and then they would have spin-offs and second movies that were straight to D DVD and often were very budget. Um, you know, some of them were, were still pretty good, but often... You could tell that they were made on a budget and didn't really live up to uh, the first movies. Beetlejuice. Classic Halloween watching. I, I mean, it's good any time of the year, but it has, has a lot of good soundtracks. Um, um, yeah, uh, crazy imagery. Um, great Halloween movie. So, uh, I believe that's the price I actually paid for this one. Normally, I pull these tags off, but a dollar ninety-five, so pretty much two bucks. Uh, Sphere, I actually ha had watched it before, but for some reason, it's one of those movies that is uh, 
not very memorable. For, it just doesn't stick in my brain. Um, I, I thought on the most part it's really good, but the the ending kind of was a lackluster, and um, it was a bit convoluted. You know, I, th you know, it was on the cusp of being, I think a really, really, really good sci-fi movie, but it just lands just a bit short, in my opinion. Next, we've got two classic 80s films, I believe. They might be from the 90s. Oh, no. We got City Slickers was 1991, and A Fish Called Wanda was 1988. Um... Jamie Lee Curtis. What a smoke show, eh? And uh, City Slickers. This is a funny, a pretty funny comedy. Um, it's been a long time since I've watched either of these movies. Uh, but yeah, John Cleese also, I mean, hilarious. Hilarious comedian. Uh, I guess we'll go into this one now i don't have a vhs player and i don't usually collect vhs uh, i do have a stack of vhs that you know at some point maybe i'll show off um but this one i happened to come across in a garage sale and i really really enjoy this movie uh the nightmare before christmas i think i think most people that have watched it have enjoyed it and i think it's a good both halloween and a christmas movie um which there's not too move, too, not too many movies you could say about uh, that about. So uh, yeah, really enjoyable. I mean, merchandise everywhere, and still to this day, I mean, you can't go anywhere and not see some Nightmare Before Christmas merchandise probably. All right, next we'll do. I have a small stack of sealed. Uh, movies that I came across here. Um, yeah, The Departed. Two disc special edition. Somebody paid ten dollars. I don't. I don't know what I paid. I probably paid fifty cents or a dollar. I think. Um, probably not the greatest movie, but anything that's sealed at this point, you know, it's not not that often you come across sealed stuff at, uh, for a good price. You know, you could still obviously go to, you know, um, certain stores like, uh, there's one, um, in Montreal, I think it's, it used to be an HM fee, but it's not HM fee. I can't remember what the name of it is, but they still sell new, new DVDs and, uh, Blu-rays and all that stuff. So there are specialty shops that you can still buy movies new, but on the most part, um, I'm not spending that price unless... You know, it's something I really need, but really, probably not. Next, we got Cheech and Chong's next movie, and Born in East L.A. Um, classic stoner movies, Cheech and Chong. Uh, you know, I think they're 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 funny. There's, you know, there's some of the jokes will land, and some of the jokes just won't land. I mean. That's, you know, so it's like a mix of a lot of jokes, but, you know, not all of them are landing, but that's kind of it to be expected, I think. But on the most part, they're, they're a good time. Uh, th these movies, I don't believe I've seen any of them. They all look like uh, some slow old school movies, but it was sealed and it's a four pack. So I thought, hey, why not? We got Rooster, Cogburn, The War Wagon, the Shepherd of the Hills and the Spoilers. Oh, I should have told you guys to uh, pause the video or close your ears. The Spoilers, look out. Silly joke, silly joke. All right, we got Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. This is actually... Um, so from what I understand, the newer ones with Johnny Depp actually follow the books closer than this one but for me this is such a classic movie and it's 
it's kind of hard to not um, view this as the definitive Willy Wonka, even though apparently it kind of strays from the book quite a bit. And the um, actually author of the book did not like this movie. Sorry, he didn't like it, but I thought it was a really good movie. And for me, I think it's a classic. Um, these, uh, I wouldn't say are underrated, but I don't think it, it's really said enough how good Austin Powers, like those, all three of them are really, really funny movies. Um, as far as spoof movies go, you know, it's kind of like a spoof, spoof of, uh, 007, right? Or something along the lines of Pink Panther, um, something like that, right? Inspector Gadget, um, yeah, I love these movies, I think, and, uh, I think to pick them up, I probably won't open these, so I'm pretty happy to have these sealed. Actually, I'll keep this as, like, a collector's thing, because I think Austin Powers so is a great series. One of the better um, comedies to come out of the 90s. Um, right up there with um, Ace Ventura, Peck, Peck Detective, When Nature Calls. Uh, sorry, Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls. That is ver one of the rare movies where I actually find the sequel way better than the original. I actually don't like the original. I find it, it's weird and kind of boring. The second one, however, um, is amazing. The jokes are hilarious. Uh, the characters even more exaggerated and over the top than the first one. And, uh, you know, the first one's important because it sets up that character in that world. But the second one is just so much better. Such a better movie. All right. Next, we've got Space cowboys uh clint eastwood tommy lee jones uh i'm sure i must have there's no way i haven't seen this movie but i don't remember anything about it so i actually look i'm looking forward to checking this one out again and this one i actually saw at a couple different garage sales i came across it for some reason um maybe it's not a sought after movie but i thought i thought it was a real a good pickup, and it's got a lot of good actors in it, so why not? Heavyweights. This is hilarious. This, uh, I could see them taking off Disney at some point, if it's even still there. But, um, you know, some people might think this is like a politically incorrect movie. But, um... I think you know you know you need to learn to 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 enjoy life and not take everything so seriously. And at the end of the day, which is healthier? Um to be skinny or, or you know, or fit or to be overweight. You know, I think uh that's a pretty easy argument in and to be healthy and uh I don't think we should make fun of people or be mean to people for being overweight. But at the same time, um, sometimes negativity is an encouragement to better yourself. And, you know, everybody has a story of being bullied about, about something and then fighting to be better to overcome that. Uh, now, I'm not saying bullying's a good thing, but in a way, it does toughen you up and it does put that flame under your butt to do better. And uh, I think in North America, a lot of people need that flame under their butt um, to be healthier and better. And, you know, look at what we just went through. And, you know, uh, it was the overweight people that got hit the hardest. So... All I'm saying is don't be, take it too seriously. This movie is hilarious. Ben Stiller is so funny in it. And uh, I think this is such a memorable, great movie. Um, 
I don't care if people say it's politically incorrect or something stupid. It's hilarious. Um, you know, to shine light on something isn't to say that it's okay or not okay. Um, you know, to say, oh, there should be no racism or th stuff of talking about racism in movies or whatever. I think as long as the moral is good, then it's all right. I think it's not a bad thing. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about, one example I will give is uh, Peter Pan. A lot of people use that movie as an example and uh, the way they talk about savages in that movie. But one of the, the biggest morals for me anyways in that movie is the Lost Boys have no racism and no concept of racism. They don't understand why she's addressing them as savages. Wendy was taught racism. And I think that's really a, a really good point that that movie is trying to make is racism is taught. It's not in, it's not in us. It's not a part of our being. We're not born racist. We're taught to be racist. And, um, you know, we could be taught to not be racist in that, in that same light. And I think that's, you know, maybe, maybe there's some things that cross the line. Maybe their depiction of Indians cross the line. But I think the moral is good. The Lost Boys are not racist. And they didn't even understand what racism was. They just understood, hey, these Indian boys are our friends, right? To me, that's a good moral. But, hey, maybe I'm an outsider on that one. Another classic Patrick Swayze movie. Let's move on into more upbeat. Uh, Dirty Dancing. This is a, a great romance movie. It's, a, it's great. It has good music. Uh, yeah. I mean, it doesn't, <coughs> it doesn't top Roadhouse for me. I think Roadhouse to me is like the ultimate Patrick Swayze movie, arguably. But Dirty Dancing is definitely up there for one of his uh, better movies. And I think Patrick Swayze is just a, an amazing actor. This is one of my favorite movies. Now, I actually had... Yeah, I have another version of this. Now, it says... Now, you have to understand I'm in, in Quebec. So every once in a while... You'll have DVDs that are strictly French. On the most part, they're always bilingual. <clears throat> Even the covers will often be in English and in French. So if you're seeing these DVDs and you're like, oh, that's a version I've never seen before. That's because I'm here in Quebec. Everything has to be bilingual, has to have both English and French. Usually it has the French ahead of the English and in bigger letters, blah, blah, blah. But Total Recall, this, I could watch this movie on repeat almost. Um, just a fantastic sci-fi action movie. Arnold Schwarzenegger at his best. I mean, he had so many bangers back in the day. Um, it's funny because that accent is, is kind of you know, I'll be back, you know what I mean? It's fun to make fun of him, but at the same time, action star at his finest. So many memorable scenes. The girl with the three boobs. I mean, as a kid, that was like, everybody talked about that on the playground. Uh, this one, my girlfriend actually told me to pick up. I don't know why. I guess she likes this movie. I thought it was kind of me mediocre, but I won't, I won't tell her. Don't tell her I said so. Uh, this movie I have no idea about. It's got Dan Aykroyd, which uh, is sneaking in right here. And uh, what is it? Ro Robert, Robert Redford. Which, these two guys are pretty good actors. Uh, 
and uh yeah so i think this from what i understood was uh kind of like um something about hackers let's see let's just read a quick excerpt robert redford leads an all-star cast in one of the most satisfying suspense films computer expert martin bishop redford heads a team of renegade hackers including a former CIA employee, Sidney Poitier. Oh, there's another classic actor. A young genius, genius, River Phoenix. There's another, you know, that's a name probably most people nowadays haven't heard of. Uh, but back in the 90s, he was a really big actor and he ended up, I think, passing away uh, under mysterious circumstances, from what I understand. Maybe it was an overdose, but people... We're kind of speculating and from what i understood he was taking a lot of the money that he was earning and he was buying land in south america and giving it back to the people and i think he pissed off somebody pissed off the wrong person now that could be complete conspiracy look up look it up double check on don't take my word on that but i remember reading something about that and that's you know often you're too generous, especially you're part of the public eye. It makes the people that aren't generous look bad. So you rub, rub people the wrong way. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. Sneakers about hackers back in the 90s. Probably going to be pretty funny because... <clears throat> their idea of computers and technology and how, how hacking would have worked back then. <laughs> Probably much different than it is in 2023. Next up, we got the complete first season of The Big Bang Theory. Now, obviously, this is probably always going to be on streaming services and probably always going to be easy to find. And uh, I think the comedy is pretty safe. It doesn't really touch many uh, political things. It's more of like a nerd comedy. Um, so yeah, it probably isn't needed to be have it on DVD. Uh, but I found it at a garage sale for cheap, so I figured, hey, why not? Still has a price tag of 20 bucks on it. It's crazy how much money people have probably poured into that industry and now just uh you know some things you invest or you put your money in and you'll get the money back and some stuff forget about it <laughs> yeah a night at the roxbury uh very silly movie but at the same time um what is love baby don't hurt me <laughs> like that's a lot of good songs and pretty funny i mean it's another one of those movies you have to be in the mood for or else you you feel like you're wasting your life away but uh dilbert i have no idea about this series i didn't know it was a, a cartoon uh i know it i used to see it in the uh newspaper once in a while and even then, I don't really remember ever reading it. And if I did, it probably wasn't that funny. But it is an animation series. It was a complete series. And uh, I got it for cheap. So I figured, why not check it out? Looking at the, the little pictures on the back, the animation does look not bad. Let's get my head out of there. I can't tell if it's... It's probably hard to get focused anyways. But Dilbert. Huh. Okay, I had to, I had to do a double take there for a second because look how it's back. Apparently, one copy was not enough for me. I needed a second copy of Dirty Dancing. Um... I don't know if I thought, I don't know what I was thinking, but I, I do really like this movie. So, I mean, if I'm going to have a double of any movie, that's probably, it could be worse. Creep Show. Um, 
I don't know anything about this movie. It's George A. Romero and Stephen King. I mean, two of the biggest names in horror. So probably, um, this movie's probably all right. Came out in 1982, so quite an old movie. I, I can imagine it being quite campy. And I think, is that Leslie Nielsen? Yeah, Leslie Nielsen. So right away, if Leslie Nielsen is in it, I can imagine it must be a comedy. So this is probably a horror movie that would be more along my lines. All right, and we're coming up. Last stack. So we're almost at the hour mark. We're at 50 minutes already. Pretty crazy. This is it. Um, I had actually never seen this. This, when it came out, was such a huge thing. Uh, it was marketed heavily. And I like Michael Jackson, but often when stuff is marketed too much, I just don't want to watch it out of principle. <clears> That's <throat> kind of funny. I don't know why I'm like that, but um, I just am. And uh, I actually thought this was pretty good. It was, it was more of like, um, it's, it's not like a documentary, but it is kind of like a documentary. And it's not quite a concert video, but it is a concert video. It's like a mix of the two, but they don't really have many interviews or and there's no like cohesive story it's just like a bunch of clips edited together um but it's michael jackson dancing and singing which he's amazing at so it's nevertheless quite enjoyable and uh yeah so i just watched that one the other day uh for the first time casper i actually had this one in that six pack as well but um another i think um this is a very early cg um, this came out back, I think it was mid-90s, what is it, 94 or something like that? 1995. So this was a year after Jurassic Park. So we're still talking very infancy of, uh, modern CG. And I think this was really well done for the time. Um, Casper looks, still holds up. Like, I, th I think, honestly, that the effects in this movie hold up pretty good. Um, and a fairly entertaining movie. I thought it was, I thought it was pretty good. Another Batman movie, The Dark Knight. Um, the follow-up to Batman Begins. So, yeah, I think the Batman Begins series was probably... Arguably one of the better Batman series is, um, maybe I don't have the nostalgia for it as, as much as the 1989 Batman movie, so I probably would say that Batman movie's better, but, you know, if you grew up with these Batman, the Batman Begins and the Dark Knight, chances are you would say those are better, and I probably couldn't argue with you with that. Independence Day. Um, this was a when this movie came out. This was another huge blockbuster. Um, I don't think the effects or anything. I don't know if this movie holds up. I I feel like it probably doesn't hold up the best. Um, but this is a pretty cool uh, special edition of it. Anytime I could find, like, look at that. Has a nice case. Has a nice booklet. Has two discs. Um, so I, I'm a big fan of uh, special editions and boxes like this with a, a bunch of extra stuff. So if the movie is halfway good and I can find a special edition like this for cheap, I probably will pick it up. Uh, and Independence Day is, again, a decent movie. It's not, it, you know, there's probably a lot better movies out there. <clears throat> I have no idea about this movie. Uh, I think... I feel like a... a yeah, I think I might have seen this movie before. I'm not sure. 
Um, Keanu Reeves is a fantastic actor. Um, he can be emotionless a little bit. Um, but at the same time, it, uh, there, there's something uh, something entertaining about that. Uh, and I don't know what it is. But yeah, so from what I understand, it's uh, a family man. His kind gesture turns into a dangerous seduction and a deadly game of cat and mouse when he opens the door to two stranded young women. So I think I have seen this movie. I think these two girls kind of like try to con him out of, out of money or something. And they're actually underage. And then they, they start threatening them. Some, some, something along those lines. It sounds very familiar, but um, pretty scary real world possibility the Amityville horror um classic horror movie uh, pretty scary actually um this one's from what 1979 so pretty old but uh yeah I feel like I remember being pretty scared of this movie when I was younger haven't watched it in a long time I'll have to be in the mood to be scared to, to actually put it on. Here we've got Body Snatchers, The Invasion Continues. So I have no idea. Is this Body Snatchers 2? Is this Body Snatchers 8? Uh, you know, a lot of these horror movies have sequel upon sequel. They're not often, some, some of them will be numbered, some of them won't. Some of them will have titles that seem like it would be the second, but it's like the fourth. So yeah, I have no idea about this movie. Um, and again, I'm not the biggest horror movie uh, fan. But resale value, I feel like horror fans especially are, are don't mind spending the bucks. So a lot of this stuff does become collectible. And um, so I pretty much picked it up mostly for that. I don't know if I'll end up watching it or not. Maybe. Just, just for the fun of it, possibly. But... Uh, so Batman, the 1966, I believe it was the year, I believe it's 1966, um, I would really like to own the actual Batman series from 1966, I don't believe it's streaming anywhere, and I don't, from what, I haven't been able to find it anywhere to watch it, um, and the DVD collection of the entire set is like a hundred bucks. I don't know if I want to suck it up at some point and just spend the hundred bucks and get it. Uh, or maybe at some point I'll come, come across it out in the wild, get really lucky and get it on the cheap. But uh, I think this is very, very fun Sunday afternoon take a nap on the couch watching like this is perfect for that uh campy um colorful I think underrated I would go as far as saying very underrated even though a lot of people know about it I don't think it's anywhere to watch right now and that to me is it boggles my mind uh you know I know they don't want to compete have to compete with the older Batman with their newer Batman and I think that's really a lot of it what it comes down to is why they don't have old movies and old shows on these streaming services because they're putting out a lot of mediocre movies and shows on the most part um you know there there still is good stuff that comes out but I would say like you know 75 percent of it is trash um, so when you're putting out trash, you don't want to compete with good stuff, right? So put, get rid of the old stuff, and then you don't have to compete with it. Uh, and I think Batman is a victim of that, I would say. Cinderella. Cinderella, Cinderella, night and day, Cinderella. Um, classic Disney movie. Um, <coughs> this one is the Platinum Edition, so it has a bunch of games and activities and bonus features and backstage and all that stuff so anytime i can pick up those disney platinum editions with a bunch of the extra stuff i'm glad to do so because even if they do have the movies streaming on 
Disney or are easily accessible through streaming. Um, you know, a lot of those bonus features aren't there. So, um, you know, especially if it's a movie that's halfway decent as an artist, um, you know, I, I like to draw, I like to paint, I like to do a lot of different art. So I like to see that behind the scenes, how it was made, especially for animation. All right, so here is just a straight up regular Total Recall. And as you can see right down here, it says Virgin Francais. And often it'll be bilingual, but every once in a while on a very random occasion, it will be just French. And this DVD happens to be just French. Why they wouldn't put both languages on there is beyond me. And why couldn't they get a French title then? You ca just call it Total Recall? Those aren't even words in French. Tabagnac, Calis. Yeah. So yeah, that kind of pissed me off that I got it home and I was like, oh, I only paid, I don't know, 50 cents or whatever. But still, I, uh, it's a waste of space. It, it's only in French. Who wants that? Tabag neck. All right. Monsters, Inc. Uh, an early, early, um, this is, what is this? 2001. So this is like one of the early Pixar movies. Um, yeah. Uh, right after Toy Story. Like Toy Story was probably the first Pixar movie, I think. Could be wrong. And I think Monsters Inc. came after that. So very early on. Um, but I think it holds up pretty good. Um, and yeah, pretty good one. Billy Crystal. John Goodman, um, classic 90s comedy actors, and then you get, those are the two main voices, so I think a great casting there. Next we have Point Break. This is a pretty crazy uh, movie with Criano Reeves and Patrick Swayze. It's about surfers uh, that rob banks, and they're pretty much thrill seekers. Um, Yeah, pretty entertaining. Next we have Thelma and Louise. Susan Sarandon, in my opinion, is a total babe. Total. A++ smoke show. Gina Davis is very good looking too. But yeah, this is a classic story. Thelma and Louise. Um running from the cops and then this one is Elvis his best friend remembers I'm a big fan of Elvis so uh, you know this is I guess uh, um, his Elvis's closest confidant shares his private collection so it's probably a bunch of clips and random things from Elvis's career so I look forward to looking at that one. And that is it for today. That rounds off. So who knows when will be the next DVD pickup video. This is, this was over the span of a couple months. This wasn't like one trip to the store. So it was multiple trips to different stores. But I had a lot of fun shopping around. I mean, back in the day when uh, the video stores were still around, uh, I used to go, you know, buy two for 15 or two for 25. And uh, that was a, a, a way that I picked up a lot of um, new movies and got to see a lot of movies back in the day. And, you know, that was something I enjoyed doing every week or so, going to the video store and picking up a couple movies. And, um, you know, we don't have that any anymore. Uh, that experience isn't there to be had, but there still is DVDs and out there and, you know, uh, a lot of these shops have multiple bookcases of DVDs to go through. So sometimes, you know, it's not spread out. It's not nice like the video store was, but it still, you know, mimics that experience a little bit. And um, 
I miss those times. I, I really do. I think, you know, the social aspect of, of movies have, have really gone away. Um, you know, everything, it, it's good to have it, everything there at home. But at the same time, it is nice to go out, even if it's just a trip to the video store to say, hey, how are you doing this week? Uh, you know, did you see this new movie? And, you know, um, it's a, it's a sad that we lost that. Uh, and, you know, same for album stores, same f for these music stores. You know, there was a lot of, it was an experience going there. It wasn't just shopping, you know, it was an experience. And, uh, yeah, so this is very nostalgic to go back and, and uh, to pay 50 cents or a dollar. I could only have dreamt of it being that cheap back back in the day when I was paying two for 25 and often they weren't good movies, you know what I mean? Um, so still a lot of fun to be had picking up DVDs, even in 2023. There's still a lot of great movies and TV shows out there. And a lot of this stuff, who knows if it's going to be on streaming services. Um, you know, it it might be there now. It might be gone tomorrow. It might come back tomorrow. It might leave. It might go to this service. It might go to that service. Um, so when it's so uncertain, you know, I think uh, picking up a bunch of this stuff for 50 cents or a dollar now is a good way to hedge your bets. Because if they take off shows or movies... Um, from these services, a lot of the time the price is going to jack up on those old DVDs and whatever because people won't have access it, to it other way. Um, so now, now I would say is the best time for anybody thinking about it. Um, you're not going to find it cheap like it is now. And if you look at old VHS, you know, you very rarely see them anywhere uh, at stores and stuff nowadays. And you look at the prices online. And some of that VHS stuff could get pretty pricey and it's kind of hard to believe, but it's become collectible. And, um, you know, DVD could very well go that way direction too. And I think it's probably a, a better form of media than VHS, you know, after we wind it and whatever, you have menus and, you know, it's quite an upgrade from VHS. So, um... Yeah, I wish you all the best. Like, subscribe, uh, look forward to new videos, new music videos, um, hopefully some gaming videos at some point. And I uh, wish you all the best. Share love to you.